our friend Dr. David Chow. Book it joins us here on the show. Good doctor. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing great. You sounded tired at the beginning here, but you got energy at the end. I sounded doctor. <laughs> I sounded tired. I, I never sound tired. I was actually wondering about somebody being tired, and that would be Sam Darnold. He's got the mono. Okay, now he's still not back. How long can mono keep Sam Darnold out? Well, look, you got to remember, Sam Darnold is only 22, so he's still like basically a college student. And I'm sure we've all heard stories about it, getting college, getting mono, and dropping out for the quarter or semester. And that's just from attending class and studying. So energy is a big deal here. The Jets seem to want him to get back in there. He wants to get back in there. He is practicing, but non-contact. So they have to wait for the spleen to make sure it gets back to regular size so that there's no dangerous internal organ injury if he were to take a hit. That's why he's allowed to practice, but no contact yet. And once that happens, it's a judgment on what his uh, fitness and energy level is. I don't think he's playing this week, hopefully uh, very soon, uh, but we'll see. Okay, but what's the bigger concern here? Is it his energy level? I mean, you say that, yeah, College kids drop out of classes, but that's just college classes. He's a multi-million dollar quarterback. There's only 16 games. Is it about energy level, or is this about the worry internal organ-wise? Oh, well, I think it's both. I mean, the, you know, they're waiting for his clearance uh, in terms of medically because of the spleen and inter potential internal organ damage. And once that happens, it will become a, a coaching decision in terms of how they feel he looks, et cetera. And, yeah, this is, quote, an NFL season. He's being paid millions of dollars. But certainly playing NFL football is a lot harder than attending class. What worst-case scenario if he goes out there with an enlarged spleen and gets hit? Well, the worst-case scenario is that if your spleen is enlarged, it extends down below the rib cage and it exposes it to injury. And sure, you can wear a flak jacket and what have you, but if you lacerate or injure your spleen, that could mean abdominal surgery and to have your spleen removed because of the bleeding that would happen. Uh, that's the worst case scenario, and uh, you know it's uh, something that you want to avoid. Can you live without a spleen? Yes, and uh, there have been NFL quarterbacks that have had their uh, injured their spleen. I believe Chris Sims is one of them when he played at Tampa. Uh, finished the game and then needed surgery. And yes, you can live without your spleen. Dr. David Chow joins us this morning here on the show. Saquon Barkley, unbelievably, had this high ankle sprain. He's on crutches. People are wondering if his season is over. And now they're talking about maybe only being out a month, maybe six weeks, and they haven't even ruled him out for Sunday yet. What do you think, prognosis wise, realistically, on Saquon Barkley? Well, you know, uh, I hate to burst anyone's bubble, but when it happened uh, at the ProFootballDoc.com site, I sort of showed the video, went over it, and I said, look, I hope I'm right. I hope it's not worse, but this isn't the end of the season. I was expecting four to six weeks. I think he might be closer to four now than the six, so that's good news. Uh, he looked pretty good early on. He's not playing this week, and he's got to get back to full speed and cutting the NFL game, as we said, is hard. It's not going to be this week. I think four weeks, uh, you know, week seven is realistic at this point in time. And uh, good for him. He's uh, fat, returning faster than some time because some were saying eight weeks. And at one point there was fear of surgery, which I personally never had. Why did you know when it happened that it, it wasn't going to be such a severe injury that you knew it was going to be four to six weeks? Well, uh, you know, first of all, I don't know for a fact, right? I haven't examined him, but my impression, what I would call insider knowledge from working in the NFL, taking care of these guys, and also studying video. When I was in the league, I studied video for 17 years. Every Monday morning after uh, seeing a player on the field, on the sideline after the game, and the next day after an MRI, the head athletic trainer and I would go upstairs and the video guys would pull up all the video, the coach's tape and the, and the uh, TV copy as well, and we'd re reverse engineer some things. And so you just study and, uh, and uh, learn things. So I call that uh, insider knowledge. But that just was my suspicion. And by the way, there are different uh, varieties and different severities of high ankle sprains, everything from A.J. Green's where he still hasn't returned yet from uh, the first practice of uh, training camp to uh, – 
you know, Patrick Mahomes, who uh, suffered one in game week one, limped through that week and uh, limped a tiny bit more the next couple of weeks, but still is on a torrid pace. Dr. David Chow joins us this morning on the show. How about some of these helmet to helmet hits that we saw this past week? We saw Jonathan Jones of the Patriots have a helmet to helmet hit on Josh Allen of the Bills. Josh Allen did not come back into that game. We also had Vontez Burfict. He hit one of the Indianapolis Colts. He was suspended for the rest of the season. People are wondering if he'll ever play football again. When you as a team doctor for 17 years see these types of collisions, what's your feeling about these guys coming back onto the field, playing again this season, and the severity of what we're watching? Well, the, the first thing is, you know, we just talked about looking at video and trying to judge a high ankle sprain. I mean, that's hard enough, but it's not impossible to get at least some idea because you see the injury. But concussions are very difficult to judge by. Uh, they're hard enough to judge when you're examining a player, but to do it off of video just really can't be done. Your suspicion for a head injury can be there off of video, but diagnosing a concussion just doesn't happen. Uh, take a look at uh, Marcus Peters in that game against Tampa, the pick six. And I put it in my Twitter timeline. I mean, that was a vicious hit at the goal line of his pick six from the offensive lineman and completely helmet to helmet. Yet he didn't finish the game because he was going through the protocol. There was about eight minutes left. But he was never diagnosed with a concussion. And he's available tonight for the Thursday, Thursday night game. So you look at that video and most people would swear that he's got a concussion, but he didn't. And meanwhile, there are times when you don't see a whole lot. They're, the player's head barely hits the turf, and they're out weeks from a concussion. So it's always hard to tell. Dr. David Chow was the Chargers team doctor for 17 years. Now he has a website that you can access his information, profootballdoc.com. And our listeners can go there and kind of study up on the things that you're seeing on Sundays, right? Yeah, and that's the idea. It's, uh, it's, it's not... It's not uh, Twitter information. It's much more deep dive than 280 words. Besides all the uh, subscriber updates, there's an injury index where it's matchup based, where you can look at certain things. You know, uh, one team's pass offense against another team's pass defense. I mean, uh, just from this last weekend, for example, we, uh, Bills versus uh, Patriots, uh, you know, if you look at the injury index grades, their defenses, both defenses were really pretty healthy, and both offenses had some issues. And uh, that's not the be-all, end-all. you got to look at everything in the whole picture because if you believe that the, both of those defenses are, are quality defenses, which I think they were, and you see that they're not injured, you know, you might look at it. And it turned out to 16-10 game, and, and seven of those points were on a blocked punt. But that's not every week. But there's other things, like if you look at the Colts last week, uh, you might have like been on the Raiders in terms of uh, what was going on. Sure, the Raiders were on the road and, and uh, were underdogs by six and a half points or seven points. But what team can survive their four top players being out, two on offense, two on defense? Well, the Colts obviously don't have Andrew Luck. They were going to miss T.Y. Hilton. They still were missing Darius Leonard from, from a concussion. And Malik Hooker was out from the knee scope. I mean, if you look at potentially the best team in the league, if you took out Tom Brady, Julian Edelman on the offense for the Patriots, and then took out Kyle Van Noy and Stephon Gilmore, would they have beat the Bills? I don't think so. That's right. Here is Dr. David Chow, and his website is profootballdoc.com. Check it out. Also follow him on Twitter at profootballdoc. The official doctor of the DA show. This was great as always. Thanks so much for doing it. We'll catch up again. Yeah, and since I'm an official doctor for you, uh, all your your followers and listeners can uh, sign up for the website for free. Oh, is that right? Okay. Well, thanks for doing that. All right. Thanks. Anytime. Thank you, David Doctor Doctor David Chow, joining us here on the show.